welcome to Pikeville History Moments, where we talk about the history and heritage of Pikeville, Kentucky, and the surrounding area. This week is National Fire Prevention Week, and today we'll be featuring the history of the Connolly House, a large building in the city that was lost to fire over a century ago. Later, we'll tell you about how the Connolly House was possibly tied to the infamous Hatfield-McCoy feud. The Connolly House was one of the first two hotels in Pikeville, but through the years, the building's history has become darkened. No photographs of the historic Connolly House are known to exist. After studying historic Sanborn fire maps, we do know that the building was located on Main Street, just below Pike Street. The site is now a parking lot located directly across the street from the Main Street Church of Christ. The Connolly House was built before 1888 and was initially a residence, but a later addition was constructed to house renters. It's reported that Winston Connolly, an attorney in Pikeville, established the hotel and that his wife, Mary Jane, operated it for many years thereafter. Miss Connolly was known throughout the Big Sandy Valley as a charming hostess and she became extremely popular with frequent travelers to Pikeville. The hotel was the first home of the Reverend David Blythe, who was hired to be the first principal of the Pikeville Collegiate Institute in May of 1889, which would later become the University of Pikeville. It's reported that he and his family spent the first year of his tenure living as boarders at the Connolly House. It was also during that time that he oversaw construction of the Pikeville Academy building that still stands on College Street today. Few details exist regarding the hotel until several newspapers reported that the building had burned down shortly after midnight on Wednesday, August 26, 1914. The Big Sandy News noted that the building's age and wood construction had made it a tinderbox and it had burned quickly. They did state that the fire department, though this is a misnomer, was able to save the very rear of the building and the nearby Hager residence. The Hagers likely owned the structure at the time of the fire. It was reported elsewhere that the Connolly House had ceased operating as a hotel sometime before perhaps as early as 1903, when Miss Connolly remarried. A 1972 publication by the Pike County Historical Society describes how fires were fought in Pikeville during the early 20th century. There was no organized fire department and no telephone service. Instead, when a fire was spotted, shouts of fire, fire, would fill the air and gunfire would ring out. These sounds would quickly draw all able-bodied people to the side of the fire, day or night. By 1914, when the Connolly House burned, the city did have a water system and the height of the reservoir that was located on the opposite side of the river produced high pressure service all throughout town. There were volunteers who maintained the firefighting inventory that consisted of three hose carts, 800 feet of hose, one extension ladder, and five short ladders. Just a decade or so earlier, such as when the old Methodist Episcopal Church caught fire, this equipment would have been non-existent. The water lines were installed in 1904, and prior to that, a fire would have resulted in a line of people of all ages standing shoulder to shoulder from the river to the fire. Buckets full of river water would have been passed hand over hand until they reached men perched on every ledge and crevice of the burning building. Thankfully, today, the Pikeville Fire Department is made up of full-time professional firefighters who are extensively trained and use the most modern equipment available, including a ladder truck capable of reaching the tops of our tallest buildings. 
In Pike County, we have an extensive network of well-trained, dedicated volunteer firefighters ready to respond at a moment's notice. Political boundaries don't mean much in the face of a fire, and these organizations often work together to save lives and property. An additional and very interesting story about the Connolly House involved the Hatfield-McCoy feud. In January of 1890, the Courier-Journal reported a rumor concerning a potential plot to help Ellison Cottontop Mounts escape from the Pike County Jail. Mounts had confessed to murdering Alifair McCoy and had been convicted of the crime. The newspaper reported that a mysterious guest at the Connolly House had made a trip to the jail where Mounts was detained. He supposedly made meticulous notes about the jail. A few days later, two more men arrived claiming to be tracking a horse thief who fit the description of the previous visitor. While most people were dismissive of any escape attempt, there was a belief among some that all three men were actually advanced scouts for the Hatfields and were helping to plan Cotton Top's escape. In the end, there was no escape and Mounts was hung on February 18th of that year. You can watch our earlier video on the hanging of Ellison Mounts for more details about that day. We'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. This week, we have a request for our viewers. As mentioned earlier, there's not much known about the Connolly House. If you have any information about it or stories you'd like to tell, please comment below or email us at tourism at pikevilleky.gov. We've also left a link to the National Fire Protection Association's website with tips on how to teach children good fire safety habits in the description. Don't forget to leave a comment and be sure to practice good fire prevention. Thank you for watching Pikeville History Moments. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe or click on the link to our website at visitpikeville.com.